Welcome back to Blast Stories. I'm your host, Mr. Blast, and today we're going to talk about my trip to Neotzmadar. Now, Neotzmadar is a kibbutz that is situated deep, deep in the desert, and it's a very, very special place. A kibbutz in general is sort of a kami community way of living in which there is no private capital. Everything is shared with the kibbutz. Uh, and the kibbutz is basically taking care of all your needs, such as accommodations, food, education, and so on. Um, there aren't that many kibbutz places left um, that actually operate this way to this day, but Notes Madal still does, so it's pretty cool. The first thing that draw me to try to understand more about this place is purely just the way it looks. I mean, just look at it. It looks like a desert Disneyland, a crazy, unique, and amazing oasis. In addition to the visual aspect of it, it's also pretty famous for its tastes. This place manufactures amazingly tasty juices, fruits, and they are very famous for their yogurt. It's basically a community that has certain beliefs and a certain way of living that is pretty unusual and unique. I've heard different rumors about this place. I've heard that it's kind of a cult, that you're not supposed to talk during meals, that if you go there, you have to live according to a specific schedule. Um, all those rumors just made me want to go there even more. You know, experiencing this Disneyland Oasis secret cult. Sounds like a perfect acid trip to me. So, how can one get to know it's Madal? Because you can't just walk in. Well, there's three main ways. The first way is that you can come just for a little short paid tour. You can do it by yourself or with a guide. And during the tour, you'll get to see their amazing arts house, which is the cool building that looks like Disneyland, that they actually built by themselves and lived in it when they just moved there. You can like see the gallery and the vineyard, and then you have to leave. The second option is to volunteer there. Now, there's actually a lot of people that are volunteering in the Otsmadao. You get food, accommodations, a really nice, play, beautiful place to live. And all you need to do is just like work and live there according to their schedule and rules. It's a pretty sweet deal, but uh, the minimum amount of time that you need to commit to is about like two months, I think. So that's not an option for me. And the third way, which is the best way, is that it just so happened to be that Neotz Madar is located right on the Israeli National Trail, okay? And the hikers that are doing the trail are more than invited to come and sleep over at Neotz Madar or volunteer and work there just like everyone else does. Now, the Israeli National Trail, from now I'll just refer to it as the INT, is a hiking path that goes all through Israel, a length of just over a thousand kilometers. The INT has been listed in National Geographic's 20 most epic trails. I wish they used the word legendary. It is described by National Geographic as a trail that delves into the grand scale of biblical landscape, as well as the everyday life of the modern Israeli. Okay, well, I decided a long time ago that I just have to do the trail, okay? But I don't intend to spend two or three months walking it. I'd rather do it by segments, okay? Just doing like four or five days a year, every year, so that it won't get boring, right? And now, after 10 years that I'm doing the trail, I finally got to Neotzmada. The plan was simple. Me and two good friends of mine start this year's segment. We start exactly where it stopped last year. After some walking, we reach to Neotz Madal. We stay there for like three nights. And after that, we continue for a couple more days on the hike. Now, my personal plan was to do some acid on the third day, you know, to experience the place properly. So, we started the Israeli National Trail. And after some desert walking, we arrived to Neotz Mada. The moment we arrived, we were explained the schedule and the rules. The day starts at quarter to 6 a.m., where you're supposed to arrive to the dining hall for the morning service. 
okay? Then at 6 a.m., you're starting your work day. Up to about 8.30, where you have your breakfast. Now, the work that you're supposed to do on every specific day is determined by the work board, okay? And the work board changes every day. The person who makes it is like a different person every day, an elder probably. And uh, the idea behind it is, uh, I have like two ideas that I think that are behind it. The first one is um, that everybody in the kibbutz should know how to do everything. You know, one day you work in the kitchen, work, one day you work with the goats, one day you work with the gardens. It, everyone should know everything. It makes it like a more powerful community, I think. And the second idea is that you are not your work, okay? In our regular life in the Western world, we are really defined by the way we make money, okay? And here I think they're trying to separate that. They're trying to tell you, you are not what you're doing for money. Uh, every day you'll, you might do something else, but basically I think they want you to concentrate on yourself concentrating on improving and getting better as a person, not like, don't worry about money. The kibbutz will take care of that, okay? Just concentrate on yourself, which is a very interesting idea on its own. Returning to the schedule, after a couple of hours of work at 8.30, there's breakfast. And after breakfast, there's like a community meeting where everybody like sits together and there's like different news and announcements. Like for example, us, the new um, hikers were introduced to the group. And after all that, there's like, a, um, a, they're asking for volunteers to different jobs except the workday itself. For example, if they need to pick something from uh, outside of the kibbutz, they need a volunteer for that who's willing to volunteer, and so on. Um, after that, everybody goes back to work up to 3 p.m. Okay, at 3 p.m. there's lunch where you're still not supposed to talk. Okay, and after that, you're free to go. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Like your workday ends at 3 p.m., right? It's, it's not that bad. And then later on you have dinner where you're allowed to talk, which is nice. And that's pretty much it. That's the schedule of Naot Smadal. In addition to the schedule, where we're told that drugs are prohibited, smoking is allowed only at one designated place for that, and uh, there is no photography, okay? In addition, as hikers, we are the only people in the kibbutz that are not allowed to go into all the water reservoirs, okay? Why? Because uh, we haven't signed anything, right? So we're not insured. So if one of us drowns in one of the like lakes, so it's a big problem for the kibbutz. So we're not allowed to walk into the water, which really sucks. Uh, after we were explained the rules and the schedule, we were free to go and explore the place. The first place we came to was the lake, okay? It was a beautiful lake. In the middle of the lake, there was some kind of wooden pagoda, okay? And around the lake, there were these lots of flowers and green lawns with uh, beautiful young volunteers sunbathing on them. All that is like in the middle of a super harsh desert, right? I was really surprised by that. Then after this lake, we went to the other lake, the much bigger lake, okay? In the bigger lake, there was an actual island in the middle of it, which you could reach only by boat, okay? It was that big. Um, then after the lakes, we went on to explore the gardens and the groves and they're all full of like little beautiful ponds and all that leads to a hill on top of which there's a pool which is called the wolf's pool and the, the pool is situated on like this little hill that overlooks a crazy scenery of the open desert. Okay, amazing. 
the place itself is huge. On the second day after work, we continued to explore the gardens, the art house, the cemetery, the goat farm. Uh, the ground was set for the third and final day at Noah's Madar. The acid day. It's acid day. But you'll have to see that one in the next episode.